This video is intended to help you understand probability and the use of Venn diagrams to help identify particular events and combinations of events, as well as conditional probabilities. For reference, I'm using the taste and music examples from your AP Statistics textbook found on pages 441 for number 670 and on page... 447 for exercise 678, but they're both related to the same information. So musical styles other than rock and pop are becoming more popular. A survey of college students finds that 40% like country music, 30% like gospel music, and 10% like both. Notice the first thing they ask us to do is to make a Venn diagram with these results. I do recommend anytime you have intersections that you make Venn diagrams. A lot of times once you make the complete diagram, you have already answered questions that you have yet to be asked. So let's create the Venn diagram now. We have two different events. Those students who like college, sorry, those college students who like country music, those college students who like gospel, and then those who like both. So whenever I'm completing a Venn diagram, I like to begin with those who like both. Let's let the blue circle on the left represent the 40% that like country music. The 30% on the who like gospel music will be represented by the red circle on the right, and the 10% will be represented by both. So I can fill in the probability of the intersection as 0 0.10 and understanding that the probability of those who like country music is 40 percent I have to know that this entire blue circle comprises 40 percent and that 10 percent of that overlaps with the red circle and so the part that is just in the blue circle with no overlap has to be the 0.4 minus 0.1 Likewise, for the red circle, the 30% that like gospel music, 10% of them are already included in the middle. And so the part that is just gospel without liking country is 0 0.20. Now, ideally, the sample space should add up to 1. If this does not happen, then we don't have a true probability distribution. If we were to add this 0.3 to 0.1 to 0.2, notice that we only have 60% of college students represented. So what happened to the other 40%? Well, these are people who don't like gospel. And they also don't like country. So let's kind of put this in symbols to help us out. If I let A represent those who like country music. And B represent those who like gospel music. Then there are some statements that I can make here. One, the probability of A intersects B is 0.1. This is the, per the probability that a college student likes both. The probability that a college student like, likes neither country nor gospel, this is this outside space that I see here, is 0 0.40. So then what does the 0 0.3 represent? And what does the 0 0.2 represent? Well, the point three represents those college students who like only country, meaning they like country and they don't like gospel. So that's point three. And in the red circle, this is the probability that a student likes gospel, but not country. So that's point two. If we add all these values together, notice that we will get one. And all of these events comprise the sample space. Either a student likes both, a student likes neither, a student likes country but not gospel, or a student likes gospel but not country. So now when you look at parts B and C of this question, part B asks what percent of college students like country but not gospel? Well, that would be A intersected with BC. And so that is just the part that we see here. I like only country. I don't like gospel. So that answer is 0.3. C asks what percent likes neither gospel nor country. Well, that's the 0.4 that we see here. So with making this Venn diagram, we've already answered these questions. So the probability that a student likes country but not gospel is 0.3. 
Oh, sorry, this is question B. And then question C, the probability that a student likes neither country nor gospel. That is our outside of point four. Now, exercise 6.78 takes us to the idea of conditional probability. There is a formula for conditional probability. I would like to save that to the end, and let's think about this intuitively. Remember that no matter what we are talking about, probability is the number of favorable outcomes divided by the number of total outcomes. So as we're looking at exercise 678, part A, we are asked the question, what is the conditional probability that a student likes gospel music if we know that he or she likes country music? So another way of phrasing that question is, out of all of those students who like country music, what is the probability that they also like gospel music? And so the total probability of liking country music is 0.4. You can get that from adding up everything in this blue circle, or you can get it just from the stem of the problem. Now, out of that 40%, 10% of the 40 like gospel music as well. So the favorable is 0.1. And of course, if we divide those, then we get a probability of 0.25. Part B asks, what is the conditional probability that a student who does not like country music likes gospel music? So now here you have to be a little creative and you have to think about things in a slightly different way. So if 40% like country music, that means 60% doesn't like country music. So out of all of those who don't like country, so out of the 0.6, out of everything that is not in the blue circle, so out of the other 60%, the 40 that's out here where no, well, the students don't like either type of music, and the 20 that's out here that just like gospel, out of all of that, what percent likes gospel music? Well, the part that likes gospel music that's not in the intersection is point two. I don't want the part that's in the intersection because those people like country music. And I'm working out of the percentage of those who don't like. And so this would be point two over point six, which would give me a probability of point three three um, repeating. So now the idea of conditional probability, we can use this intuitively to develop the formula. So what did we do here? We wanted the probability that event B happens knowing or given that, that's what the vertical line represents, that I know event A has happened. And so what did I do? I looked at the total probability of event A happening, and then I looked at where... I had events A and B happening at the same time. So that's where that formula of conditional probability comes from. Hopefully this gives you a little bit more insight as you work on your independent study unit this week. Make sure that you are emailing me with questions or messaging on Blackboard or taking advantage of whatever avenues you have to reach me during this week. Good luck with your studies.